Good morning, combo fans. It is almost 5 a.m. and I am Bryant Cook. I'm tired. I scrubbed out of the first one and decided to get five hours of sleep. Uh, and now here I am, ready to play more Magic the Gathering. We are playing the Epic Term version 12.5. This list has been our list since the end of July. It has not changed. If you're interested, there will be cards throughout this video linking to other videos on 12.5. You should definitely click on those. They'll appear in the top and they'll swipe over. But today, we are playing Eternal Weekend. This is for a Bayou painting, and uh, hopefully we spike this. If you're unfamiliar with this deck list, I'm not going to do a long deck tech today, but I will cover some of the main highlights of 12.5. So one of the big things is that we're playing white in the deck. So we have a Scrubland and we have a Tundra. This is sort of made possible by Mox Opal being the 2021 version of Gemstone Mine. We don't need to play five color lands anymore because we have Mox Opal and Lotus Petal for our fixing and this beautiful fetch land mana base for this white card orange chant that is replaced Defense Grid. Defense Grid is no longer good due to the density of prismatic ending in the metagame, but as well as Ragavan making treasures, allowing the blue red tempo decks to just pay three mana very easily. So instead we're playing Orm's Chant that also answers Mindbreak Trap in the non-blue matchup. So Orm's Chant's just a very versatile Magic the Gathering card. I leave it in even against non-blue decks nowadays. But the main reason to play white is prismatic ending. This card is just it's beautiful. It is so versatile and it comes in all the time. Uh, and But the main thing that it does is it allows you to answer things on curb. So on turn one, you can answer Deafening Silence. On turn two, Thalia or Sphere Resistance. It really does do everything. And because it's so, you know, versatile and effective, it's good enough that we were willing to splash white for it. It's probably the best removal spell ever printed. And uh, we should be playing the best removal spell ever printed. It sort of came from the thought of, at the time when it was released, we started splashing just for Abrupt Decay. And if we're splashing for Abrupt Decay, we should definitely be splashing for Prismatic Ending. But that's not the only Modern Horizons 2 card that made a big impact. We also have Galvanic Relay, which bullies control decks. Stifle isn't popular in the metagame. Fluster Storm barely sees any play. So Galvanic Relay does work against those decks where we get to bully them with all of our free artifacts into casting Galvanic Relay for free card advantage. It's just amazing. We're willing to play four, and there's a reason we call it Red Necro. It is so effective. Those are the big ideas behind version 12.5. If you enjoyed that brief deck tech and you're looking to support us, like, comment, subscribe. Those things are free and easy to do. And while you're here watching Storm content, so I know that you like it, why wouldn't you want to introduce others by supporting this video into getting into the YouTube algorithm. So do those things, it really would mean a lot to me. We're almost to 6,000 subscribers, so if you're looking to support us, please, please, please subscribe. And thank you to everyone that has already subscribed. I can't believe we're about to cross that threshold. When I set that goal back in December of last year, I didn't think I would quadruple our channel growth this year. And now here we are with a month to go. We're about to cross that line. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, but if you're looking to support us in any other way, you can click on the join button next to the subscribe button. And there you will unlock badges and emotes, but we have a free discord with that membership. You unlock the members only section of that discord where I post early deck lists and thoughts. You're definitely going to want to check that out. It's only $4.99. So definitely become a member to support us. And then we have two upper tiers where you unlock half off donation decks, sideboard guides, why wouldn't you want to do that? And then for our top tier, you get early access to all videos and free donation decks on top of everything else. So you're going to want to click that info, read everything about it. That is the join button. And if you want to support us in any other manner, we do have the epicstorm.com slash donation decks where you can submit your combo brew to be featured here on this very channel. We also have the epic tier where you can even be in a video with me. So definitely go to the epicstorm.com slash donation decks and there you can read all about every tier and select the one that's best for you. We also have the epicstorm.com slash shop where you can pick up card singles and store merchandise including our mini token pack to make storming and paper even easier for you. For $13, you get 64 double-sided tokens, mana, creature tokens, storm counters, we've got it all. 
definitely go check that out. This event's going to start any second now. I actually just have to run. I'll see you in match number one. Welcome to round number one. We are on the play. It's 5 a.m. and I'm tired. We are facing green white depths. Here we have a hand that's so close to being good, but unfortunately, I think we just have to mulligan. Uh, it just doesn't really. If this was a wish claw, I would actually keep, but this hand just doesn't do anything. We, we can chip for better. Um, I don't love it, but I do think that this is a keep. All right, let's bottom this Orm's chant. And uh, let's see what we can do. All right, Underground Sea into Ponder. Well, there's an Echo. Um, I think that this is. Okay. And pass the turn. Forest? Reclaimer, you got it. Mox Diamond. And Green Sun for zero, getting Arbor. That's a very quick start. We're going to play Wishclaw Talisman and pass the turn. Keeping the Ponder on top. You could fetch away the Ponder, but if our opponent has some sort of main deck removal for Wishclaw Talisman, we want the Ponder to help be able to find lines at Diamond, like a Prismatic Ending right there. So that's why we kept Ponder on top. Okay, let's cast the Ponder looking for Diamond. Ding! Okay, we're going to play our land, play out Lotus Petal, Right of Flame, Lion's Eye Diamond, and now we're going to flash back the Echo, floating a blue and a red. Okay, Storm 5, Echo of Aeons. And our opponent here could use Reclaimer to go get um, Bajuka Bog, but that's not an impactful play. So we actually drew the Ad Nas because we're super lucky. Um, and now we get to put it on the stack. Right of Flame. Max Opal. I'm going to fetch. I know, like, you're not supposed to fetch um, free Ad Nas or whatever. But we're about to sacrifice both of these diamonds. And I don't see why um, you need to. Uh, Sorry, I'm like losing my words right now. I'm so tired. Uh, and cold. Very, very cold. Like you're going to run the risk of drawing all your lands, and you're going to have plenty of mana floating with the Lion's Eye Diamonds. That's what I was trying to say. All right. So I think mana is not going to be the bottleneck here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast Brainstorm, and then I'm going to hold priority, cast Ad Nauseum, and now we'll do Black Red. Okay. Now we just flip until it's no longer safe. We don't have an echo on our main deck, so we could actually go pretty low here. Okay, and that's game number one versus green white depths. Well, we don't want Veil of Summer. That much I do know. And I'm going to look at a recent green white depths list to see. No mind breaks. They do have Deafening Silence, Force of Vigor, Endurance, Choke. Static Teague, oof. A lot of hate. So we can afford to board out an Orm's Chant here for all five removal pieces. And then I think we keep one Chant in the deck. Um, it's probably better than something like a Galvanic Relay, in my opinion. So that's why we're going to keep it around. We can use it to like upkeep Orm's Chant them, to like time walk them. Like It has utility. It's not just a protect. And I'm not going to ship this hand. This hand's pretty good. Very close to a turn one if we drew like a Chromax or a Lotus Petal. Our opponent's taking a mulligan. And now they're on four cards. So they're mulliganing hard for uh, the Deafening Silence. Okay. They're on four cards. One sub teeth. No Deafening Silence. Okay. Draw. Good draw. All right, I'll take that. Flagstones. Ah, yeah, okay. Reclaimer, sure. Now we'll draw. Lotus Petal. That should be enough to win here. So the 
turn gets higher, then the fluted delta gets underground sea. This is freezing right now. I'm like literally shivering. I don't know if you can tell in the video or not, but it is cold. Right of flame. Dark ritual. Lotus petal. Mox opal. We're sequencing in this order to help uh, reduce the effectiveness of force negation. Or <laughs> force negation, force of vigor. And here they're pausing because they could have force of uh, vigor there. And now we're just going to add a bunch of mana to our mana pool and uh, put ad nauseum on the stack. Uh, I think I want to float a block. Ad nauseum. Two cards in our opponent's hand. Surgical. Sure, you can have my dark grits. I think Lion's Eye Diamond is the better choice there, but. Maybe they have double surgical and it won't matter. Surgical's uh, not in their last list, which means that they might have moved on from endurance. Okay, does Adnaz resolve? It does. Okay. And that's looking pretty good already. Okay. Flipping. Lotus Petal. Horns Chant. Uh, Wish Claw. We don't have, well, we do have a land drop still. Let's flip. Mox Opal. Verdant. Pearl Mox. Right of Flame. We'll stop there. Okay. Beautiful. Lotus Battle. Mox Opal. Play the Opal. Let's chant them. Lions at Diamond. And now I don't have to worry about Force of Vigor anymore because they're at one card and they're chanted. All right, and our opponent's going to concede the game. We've won match number one over green-white depths. This is a nine-round event, so there are eight more beautiful rounds of Magic the Gathering to be played. It's going to be a long day. Hopefully, by the next round, I'll actually be been woken up. Uh, but uh, I'll see you there. Round number two, we're on the play against the Angry Fish, and according to Goldfish and my history of facing the Angry Fish, they play a lot of Eldrazi aggro. Um, not a matchup I want to face. That said, I'm not going to mulligan on the blind. It's been a while. They could be playing anything, so I'm just going to keep this and uh, reevaluate after. So I'm probably going to lead on Underground C, so that way I can cast Brainstorm into Wishclaw, trying to set up a turn 3 win. And our opponent took a mulligan to 6. Okay. Please not Eldrazi. Please not Eldrazi. Eldrazi is not a very popular deck anymore, so who knows? But the thing about Legacy is people just play whatever makes them happy. And here we have the Ancient Tomb and the Chalice of the Void. All right, we're going to cast this Brainstorm. Our only way of answering uh, Chalice of the Void is to Prismatic Ending. We're going to get rid of this Orms chant. Okay. Looks like they might have another ch oh, a bobble. Oh, this is the blue echo deck. Okay, not Eldrazi, but still difficult. They bobbled us, sure. I mean, this is definitely in their wheelhouse. So this is a turn three ad nauseum, assuming our opponent doesn't have a force. Okay. Now we're gonna fetch away that Orms chant that we don't want. I am going to get a white source in case we draw into Burning Wish. Play Wish Claw. Petal. Opal. And pass. Alright, so we're looking to untap and cast Ad Nauseum. They have five cards in hand now. I'm not sure what this Psy, okay. Three cards in hand. They didn't play any artifacts there. So this is five mana. Mox Opal could be six into Ad Nauseum. Uh, I think the best plan here is to not give them any more time to draw. This deck does play Force of Will. So I kind of just have to hope that they don't have it here. I don't really have a, another choice. All right. And now Ad Nauseum. And they had force. 
weird ad. All right, I'm just going to go to game two. We're not going to come back from that. Kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. So I think we want the abrupt decays. And I think we're going to do a hybrid plan. They bore it into eight forces, so we definitely want the relays. I don't... Well, they are an ancient tomb deck, so maybe the tendrils is fine. But we can board out ponders. And... I think we don't want the echo against the eight force deck personally. So now we're two cards over. Last night I did something pretty similar uh, in one of my matchups where I boarded out a Mox Opal and then the Tendrils against, um, what was it? I can't remember, but this is, uh, this is how I boarded last night, but I, against the Ancient Tomb deck, I don't hate having Tendrils, so I'm a little unsure. Um, wonder if like I do two relay and take out the opal. Alex has been championing, uh, keeping, just boarding like it's a blue deck and doing this because they have three chalice in their deck if they're a normalist. But I'm guessing our Eldrazi aggro opponent, um, well, historically, is probably playing the full set. Maybe this is just how we board. It's a tough matchup for sure. Eight forces and chalice. This technically beats chalice plus we can turn these into spells. I'm going to keep. All right. Verdant pass. We can answer a turn one chalice and then hopefully by turn three, we draw some more cards to play into the relay. Ancient tomb. Opal. Hobble. Chalice, yep. And another chalice. So chalice zero actually hurts them quite a bit. Um, because their deck is just like full of zero mana artifacts. So I'm not going to blow up this chalice. We can beat that using Veil of Summer. It's not like I need these Chromoxes anyway. Draw. I like the wish pickup. <laughs> okay. Now we pass. On their end step, I'm going to fetch for Underground Sea. Or maybe I'll get Scrubland, actually. Thought Monitor. Okay. I guess maybe I should have blown up the Chalice. Main phase? I don't know. So if I get Scrubland... I have White from that, so I guess I'm supposed to get Scrubland here. And then Green, Black, Decay... Blowing up the chalice on one. Okay. Draw. Wish claw. Hmm. I'm gonna burning wish here. Go grab ending. All right, they forced it. That's fine. Pass the turn. From Mox, okay. Back up to five cards after catching in that bobble. All right, so now they're at 14. This is why I didn't want to board out the tendrils. Look at all this damage the tomb is doing them. All right, so I think I might hold on to this relay for a little bit because if they keep on tapping uh, ancient tombs, we could use these to generate storm into a tendrils. And they're just throwing away cards. Now they have one card in hand. Uh, zero cards in hand now. Okay. But they now have six power on board. Another Wish Claw. That's actually not bad. Okay, we're going to have to pass the turn here. I would have liked uh, to be able to double claw there, but it's not the end of the world. So we're going to take six. And that's going to put us to 11. They're at 14. So right now I'm sort of like trying to figure out a plan. One of the one of my plan right now is to wish claw for Vale to beat Chalice of the Void. And they're going to 12 here, which kind of helps me. They're sacking the opal, the draw card, okay. They still have one floating. So they could sack these two Thopters to draw another card. I don't know if they're going to do that or not. And they drew an opal, okay. And now they're going to sack two to draw another. Yep. 
So they just reduced their clock. So now they only have four power in play. That's another storm, but not quite good enough yet. Whoops, I can't cast it that way. Play another claw. Pass. Two cards in hand. Saga, okay. We're taking four, going to seven. Saga is not active, so they can't make a construct. Draw. That's the tendrils. Okay. So they're at 12. I can tap the drop, go get Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. They only have one card in hand. So if it's a force, they'd have to sack both of these in order to just hit a blue card. Let's go get Dark Ritual. Cast the Dark Rat. Storm 1. Now let's activate this. Go get another Dark Ritual. Cast it. Storm 2. Oh, they can sack my claws to draw a card. I did not consider that. Yep. Okay, resolved anyway. From Mox, we're going to auto yield to this. From Mox. From Mox. And Tendrils. All right, so looks like we're going to get game number two from this Chalice of the Void eight cast deck. I wonder if this is sort of a, a crazy thought here. What if we boarded out two chants for two endings? Because they have, I guess they have eight forces. That's probably not the line we want to go with. I'm just going to keep it as is. It worked in game two. I don't hate it. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. Seat. Bobble and Emery. So that's pretty good. Uh, ooh, they milled two forces, but they also milled a chalice. Lotus Petal. Give me an Echo right here. Come on. I'll take a Brainstorm. All right. Lines of Diamond. Mox Opal. Little Mox. Imprint the right. I'm going to cast Brainstorm. Okay, so I can upkeep chant them. Trying to buy time. I don't hate that. Because then if I draw a Burning Wish or a Claw, I'm like pretty close to an Echo. All right, well, they found Orm's chant. Okay, and now I'm going to fetch for... Scrubland and cast this chant. This is uh what well, back in the day when we used to play a lot of orange chant, we would call it chant walking. And then later on silence walking. Alright, come on, deck, please give me an echo off the top. Please. Okay, I'm getting in there. Come on, deck, give me echo. Please give me echo. Draw. Yes! See if they force the wish before uh, casting one of these. They let it resolve. And now we go get Echo. Cast Chant. Alright, now we spin the wheel on Echo of Aeons. We still have a land drop. That is very close. We're one mana off from winning here. All right, so we need this brainstorm to hit uh, two mana, and then it, it's tough. Or all right, this brainstorm, I'll, I'll reevaluate. I don't want to go through all the cards it could possibly hit, but let's just see. Uh, we're gonna have to pass here. Oh my! All right, so that's kind of dangerous, but if we're able to untap, I can chant them, but. It's going to be a little bit tough because Chalice for one takes away our protection spells. Ah, uh, we were so close to winning right there. 
just kind of brutal. All right, Ancient Tomb. They're an 8-4 stack, so winning on our turn is going to be difficult, even without the Chalice of the Void. Here's the Chalice. Oh, that's a Cage. Okay. I don't mind Cage. Uh, they're at 18. There's Chalice for 1, so that's going to shut off our Protection spells. They're going to Bobble us. And... I don't know what we revealed. Oh no, they looked at our top card, wrong bobble. Alright, so they have three cards in hand. I think I'm just gonna play it slow and like try to double claw. Okay. I can probably move this sideboard down. Bobble seat. Three cards in hand. They're bobbling. Yeah. They're just Getting a lot of card advantage here. They're going to counter this. So that means that they might have double force. Yeah, they have another force in their hand. I just have to let that go. All right, so realistically, I really want to draw. Okay, so now that Saga is only giving me a short uh, time span to go all in on this Witch Claw. So we probably need to move sooner rather than later. I have two cards in hand. Three after their draw, my turn with the bobble. Because this is going to get needle on a few turns, and when that happens, this Wish Claw will be shut off. Okay, threw up the three now, draw. Battle. I just have to pass. We need Abrupt Decay off the top. Abrupt Decay off the top would give us a win with protection. There's Saga. The shame that Echo was one mana short. So close. Draw. That's interesting. Um I wonder if they counter this. They're countering. They're at fourteen. So that's from three. Four, five, six. We're we're one mana short of a win. Oh. And if I pass, they're going to get Needle. I'm pretty sure all these decks play Needle. Um, let me just check Old Fish real quick. Here are the recent lists. Main deck Needle. Cyborg Needle. And I'm pretty sure they would have Needle in against me. They have two cards in hand. I mean, it's Force Blue card. I'm just going to have to run into it. I don't really think I have a choice here. Storm 3, 4, 5, Tendrils is 6. What if... Okay, let me think about this again. Um, Brainstorm gets countered by this Chalice, and then that's from 4. Burning Wish Tendrils is still only 6. We're so close to lethal. I just have to put Ad Nauseam on the stack and pray that for some reason they don't have a force in hand. Alright. No whammies. No whammies. And here's the force. It resolved? What? Oh wow, we have a chance at this. Come on deck, please. We need more zeros. Zeros? There's a zero. We're at eight. We've used the main deck echo so we can flip safely. There's nothing that kills us here. We can flip again. Oh no, there's echo. Oh my god, there's relays in the deck. Oh my. I forgot about relay. That could have just killed me. Wow. I, I don't know why it, it didn't dawn on me until after I hit yes. Oh, wow, that was scary. Yeah, we can just cast Tendrils here. I am so dumb. I can't believe that I flipped there. And we can just cast the Tendrils here to avoid if for some reason our opponent was slow rolling a force. Wow, I can't believe we won that. 
Holy smokes. I flipped when I shouldn't have. Our opponent didn't have another force. That I'm blown away right now. We are 2 0 in Eternal Weekend. That's round two of nine, so there's seven still more to go. That was some great magic. Uh, I'm not going to say I played it well, but that was very, very exciting. I'll see you in match number three. Hey there, welcome to the third round. We're facing Delthar, who typically plays lands. And here we have a hand that doesn't quite do anything. We have this bad lands. We have a ponder that we can't cast. If one of these Bright of Flames was a petal, I'd probably consider keeping it. But instead, I'm just going to mulligan down to six. And this is much better. Um, we have to put one on the bottom. I think it's supposed to be the wish. And then we can set up turn two talisman into turn three ad nauseum by playing the verdant out first so it doesn't get hit by waste. Okay, Delthar, are you on lands? It looks pretty landsy to me. Exploration? Caracas? Okay. Draw. Dark Ritual. Brainstorm. Okay. Might cast that on their own step. There's adapts. What are they doing? Okay, not dead. So that's a good sign. They did not play an extra land right there. We're gonna get underground scene cast brainstorm. And we hit dark rit. So this actually means that we have a win right now, I believe. I'm gonna go through the process on my turn, but it should be a win. All right, so scrub land. And then we can tap these to play Wish Claw, Petal, Opal for Middle Craft due to this Wish Claw. And now from here, we can go right, right, Dark Ritual, activate Wish Claw, cast Ad Nauseum, floating a black. So we're going to activate the Claw now from 21 life. Ad nauseum. Okay. Just flip. Not a great start, but, you know, a lot of life left to go. And we've got it from here. We just have to not kill ourselves. Okay. And stop there. No extra clicks this time. Okay. So now we just need to finish casting our spells. This is the easy game. Uh, no offense to Lance players, but game one is a joke. And then games two and three are way more competitive. Okay, so Lions at Diamond, Right of Flame, and Tendrils. Okay. Click, 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 boom! Okay, so that is game number one. Now to win one of the two difficult games. This is our opponent's recent list. This is from 10th and a challenge uh, in October. So roughly one month ago, but I don't think lines has changed much since then. Triple force of vigor. Endurance isn't a card that's relevant against us, but force fear resistance and three power blocks. So that's 10 cards coming in. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be, you know, not the easiest. No mind breaks though, so that means that we can actually just board out the veils and board in the endings, board in the relays. The question is, do we want Orm's Chant or do we want to bring in something like Galvanic Relay? I'm not quite sure. I think we might want the chant just to like make sure that we have something in the deck in case we need to echo, we have a protection spell. Or you could play it preemptively, so that way you can dodge Force of Vigor. I think I like the one chant. I'm just going to submit this. Our opponent is taking a mulligan to six, and we have a hand that's a lot of tutors. I don't know how I like this. I do like lands to cast our answers, but we don't even have an answer. This hand feels a little bit like a trap. Against better judgment, I'm going to keep. This is a hand in my article I said not to keep, and here I am keeping it. They're going to five, so maybe it will pan out. All right, it looks like they're going to keep their five here. They're pausing for a while, so normally this Burning Wish could get Prismatic Ending, but we boarded 
in all of our endings, so that's not an option here. So this Burning Wish is really just an action spell. So look at it as Echo of Aeons or Peer Into the Abyss, even Galvanic Relay, but it is not an answer to Sphere Resistance. Okay, they kept their five. Thespian Stage, Mox Diamond, Discarding Verdant Catacombs, and Pass. An interesting start. So no Sphere. Huge draw. All right, we're just going to play turn and pass. Port. Okay. So I think that they probably have either Force of Vigor or Pyroblast in hand if they were willing to keep the five. They're going to port our land here. And now we're just going to go fetch for Badlands because we have Trop. Okay. And now a Dark Ritual will be welcome here because that equals Peer into the Abyss. Does Rite of Flame do it? I don't think it does. Um, so we have two initial mana here, three mana, and then this is six mana, nine mana. I, yeah, I think that's just a Peer into the Abyss. Rite of Flame. Dark Ritual. So that's five. Six, nine. That's Peer. Hold Control. Add three block. Okay, now we click on Peer into the Abyss. And we go straight into the Abyss. All right, so Chrome Mox. They could destroy it with the imprint trigger on the stack, but they didn't. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Let's find another artifact. We don't have another artifact? Wow. Um... <laughs> Okay. I mean, we have Wishclaw here, but I'm kind of surprised by that. It gives us Metalcraft. There's very few zeros in that top half of the deck. Okay. Play Opal. We're going to silence them. And then Tendrils. Three and oh! We're officially one third of the way through the Swiss portion of eternal weekend stick around i'm sure there's going to be more exciting magic okay on the draw match number four i have no idea what our opponent's playing i'm going to keep this this hand seems very reasonable especially against a blind opponent all right our opponent's on five now all right let's start off oh we're facing oops we're in trouble all right, we're not winning this match. That's unfortunate. Yep. What a bummer. Pact of Negation, no Veil of Summers. They have Thought Seize and Pact's Main. Might as well see if they misclick somehow. And the Dread Return. Yep. Okay, it's going to be a fast round. Uh, I don't think there's really a point in boarding, so we're just going to resubmit. So how we win this is that we turn one them game two and just hope that they mulligan into oblivion in game three. Okay, we're on the play for game number two. Unfortunately, hands like this are just not keepable, and we have to ship them if we want to actually win this. I would love to keep this. It's just we're not allowed to, so I have to go to five. Just if your hand doesn't turn one combo, you can't keep. Going to four. Just not good enough. Going to three. This is a bummer. All right, so... We just have to hope that the chant is good enough. Kind of unfortunate. We just have to pass. So if they have packed, we're just dead. And they have thought seize. Alright, we might as well. I could chant them, but it takes away drawing a cantrip into. Actually, I guess I can get Tundra here. In case they try to kill me here. It gives me the out of drawing um echo. And not echo. 
Okay. Pass. Informer, okay. I don't know why that took so long. All right, so they're, you know, milling themselves out. Wayline is Sanctity. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else spicy in here? All right, so they're playing Therapy. I named Silence this time, which I do not have. Okay, and now they get back their Oracle, and that is the end of the match. Bummer, we're now 3-1 to Oops All Spells. Alright, match number 5, we're on the draw, and we've opened up a hand that's just terrible. We can't keep this. Uh, this could work. Alright, bottom box opal. City of Traders, Lotus Petal. So... Oh, so we're just getting bodied. All right, uh, let's put a wish claw into play. They're just passing. Okay. Uh, do we have any sort of win here? Probably not. Dark ritual. I'm guessing that they have some sort of counter in their hand, which is why they would have kept this hand. So we could go. Right, right, Wishclaw for LED Ad Nauseam. Or we could pass. Like, they don't just keep this hand without counters in it. It's a tough call. I feel like going for it's just, like, super greedy. Yeah, I'm gonna pass. Okay, please don't kill me. That's not good. And we're dead. Okay. Emrakul and Venser. So this whole Venser thing, it's not good, but it's what the blue-white Omni tell players do, so I'm guessing that this is actually just blue-white Omni. So we have to worry about Orm's chant. All right, so we got a little bit of information out of our opponent. A bunch of the blue-white Omni players play like Meddling Mage in their deck. And they're sideboard, so I think we're supposed to board in the decays. It feels really bad because like you don't want to draw them, but I think it's what we're supposed to do here. Just like a really miserable matchup for us. Yeah, we haven't had very. I, I guess we've had two land based decks this uh, event, so I can't complain too much in five rounds. But the other three rounds have just been like brutal, miserable matchups. We got lucky against eight cast. Oops, all spells, and now. The Omnitel deck that has Force, Meddling Mage, and Orange Chant in it. Yeah, I'm not going to win this one. We're on the play. Sure. Going to taking a mulligan. Okay. Verted pass. Are they just going to turn one me two games in a row? <laughs> All right. Put our wish claw into play. Um, so in theory, I could kick Orm's Chant to buy time. Was that a good draw? I'm a mana short of casting ad nauseum. Okay, so we just need to draw a mana source uh, on our turn, and then I can cast ad nauseum. Okay, and now we're going to fetch for Scrubland. Kick Orm's chant. Kicker, target thumb. Yeah, we just need a mana source. And then we wish claw for Dark Ritual. They have three cards in hand. Oh, so they also have Orm's chant? Cool, we're dead. <laughs> Draw. That hurt. We would have drawn the mana source too. All right, I feel like we got nut drawn this round. Nothing I can do about it. Three and two. Match number six, we're on the play. Our opponent has an 80 card deck and I faced them two months ago and they were on Yorian Death and Taxes. It looks like that has not changed. So we're looking for a fast hand. This hand isn't going to cut it, so we need to ship it. 
This hand will do. Keep Bottom Veil of Summer, and we're going to cast Echo on the first turn with two mana floating Storm 4. So we're going to fetch for Badlands here. And then Right of Flame, Right of Flame, Lion's Eye Diamond. Discard our hand to add three blue mana and cast this Echo of Aeons from our graveyard. I'm sorry, we had four mana floating. Um, so we can play Mox Opal, Lion's Eye Diamond. We don't have any black mana, unfortunately. But what we do have is an Empty the Warrens for a whole metric butt ton. All right, so this is going to be 16 goblins on the first turn on the play. And death and taxes cannot beat that. Okay. Black Belcher, we're back! So at this point, we are just playing for pride. See if maybe we can top 16 on breakers. Uh, we are dead for top 8 at being X2, unfortunately. Only X1s made the top 8 of the Friday night event. And uh, starting with two losses this early in the tournament, we're just not going to be in competition. So if you're looking for a top eight run, you're probably watching the wrong video at this point. All right, so we need to board out the veils, bring in the decays. We want prismatic ending. So we're at 61 right now. And my opinion is you board out a ponder. These death and taxes decks have mind break in the board and you need Orm's chant in order to beat mind break. So that's what we're going for here. To shave a ponder and uh let's see if we can get another win okay so we're going into game number two on the draw and this hand is a keep this hand has the potential to win on turn one on the draw so cards we're afraid of they kept seven so deafening silence here is uh definitely a concern so and that would have been a turn one win had they not had deafening silence all right so now we just need to try to find an answer and ponder. Unfortunately, we have to shuffle that. Draw. And pass the turn. Too bad we weren't on the play this game. Your Labyrinth shuts off the brainstorm. We can play Chrome Mox here and printing the chant. And that way, if we draw an ending, we can cast it immediately. All right, so Labyrinth we're not gonna, gonna, is going to knock us down to 16 life here. Third land. Uh, that's tough. Okay. Draw. So this gets bad lands into Wish Claw. Okay. So next turn, we can activate bad lands. Or tap Badlands, activate Claw for ending on the Deafening Silence. But the Spirited Labyrinth is holding back the Echo, but also we can't do anything anyway. So the upside here is if we just naturally draw Ending, we can cast Ad Nauseam with all of our Rituals in the Wish Claw. All right, third land for our opponent. And we're going to 12 life. What do they have post-combat? Vile. Prismatic Ending. Um, I think I'm going to hold that. All right, so the Revival goes up to one here. And now we go to nine life. So Ad Nauseam is being shut off every turn by the Spirit. Well, I, I shouldn't say being shut off, but being knocked down. Uh, Three mana. Are they putting Yuri into hand? They are. Okay. Draw. Tundra, we need another action spell. But also, like, our opponent isn't doing anything, so I almost think that they have Mind Break in hand. And another Spirit attack, we're going to 6 life. 5 mana. If they play Yorion here, and they didn't, why wouldn't they play anything with their 5 mana? Just have to pass. The Spirit was definitely good this game. This an instant vial? Sure. Okay. Five mana. Solitude. That would make sense. Uh, we're just dead here. Alright, let's go to the next game. That's six power. So I could, like, 
activate Wish Claw to get Orange Chan to kick it, but I don't have any outs. So we're just better off going to the next game. So they left in Solitude. We're just going to resubmit this. And we're on the play. So if we could open up our game two hand right now, we'd have a turn one win. But instead, we just have to get a little bit lucky. This hand's just way too slow. We have to ship that. Oh. I'm supposed to keep this? We could go like Petal Brainstorm. We, we would bottom scrub lane, go Petal Brainstorm, and pray to hit like Ad Nauseam. Uh, I don't know if I love this. But I think it's probably better than a five. Okay. Lotus Petal Brainstorm. Give me Ad Nauseam, please. Damn. I'm in trouble. We just have to pass here. Wasteland. Okay. I'm going to take the redraw here. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is cast the brainstorm and hope to hit. Not quite. We have an action spell, but it's just this is really slow. It's honestly a good thing if they try to waste me here. I wonder if they were thinking about surgical on brainstorm saga. They don't have any white mana. This feels like a hand that has uh, Mind Break in it. But if I fetch, they waste me. I actually think I want land the fourth land here, because I think they're going to try to waste me. So now I get Peer into the Abyss. Pass the turn. So next turn, I can Peer, but I lose the Mind Break. So I guess our best draw is Orum's Chant. Yeah, they definitely have my rake in hand. Grab land. Come on, Chant, please. Uh, that's also really good. Dark Ritual. Ad Nauseam. Storm 2. They could Surgical the Dark Rit. Well, that's not a great start. Right, eight. We still have a tendrils in the deck. Five. Still have a land drop. So I can play the delta, but if I flip tendrils, I'm in trouble. Um. Four. I want to stop at four. I don't need to risk losing. Okay, so play out the pedal. This is our third spell. Diamond. Diamond. Diamond again. Go to three. Dark Ritual. I can double action spell here. So I lose the double Mind Break Surgical. Um, so if their hand is Mind Break, Mind Break Surgical, I would lose. They've selected to mind break the wish claw. So if they have mind break surgical in hand, we're just dead. All right, so burning wish is resolved. Get tendrils, cast tendrils. Tendrils is on the stack, storm 11. Solitude cannot exile itself, by the way. So if you're thinking, what if they cast solitude here? That doesn't actually matter um, because you can't play it, exile itself in game three. Okay, so they're making us click with tendrils. They're pausing a really long time in every single interaction. So here's the long pause while they mind break all of our copies of tendrils. And then we're gonna cast echo with some mana floating. I don't know which. Okay. Now we echo. I think I'm just going to keep black red floating. That is the main deck echo. All right. Um, not quite a win here. I'm going to 
um, brainstorm and hope to spike draw we've played a land is this a lethal grape shot it is it's lethal grape shot okay so we just have to hope to be lucky here from 18 from 19 from 20 i'll let you i mean if they have it they have it they're resolving all right what a match we are now four and two with three rounds left to go maybe we can you know have more exciting matches like this round seven of nine and we are on the play i have no clue what our opponent's playing and unfortunately this hand is a mulligan i think i can keep this and then bottom a brainstorm keep bottom brainstorm looks like our opponent also took a mulligan our opponent has revealed chancellor of the annex well then that throws a pretty big wrench into my opening hand i just have to pass now black red reanimator yikes don't feel good about this matchup we have had kind of difficult matchups today if i'm being completely honest i'm not facing a whole lot of the upper tier of legacy targeting themselves with unmask so they're all in on chancellor so it's possible for us to beat this opening we have the veil of summer but we'd have to start drawing very well from here on out there's chancellor draw we just have to pass okay so we're gonna fall to 15 life draw okay so that's i mean that is honestly a good draw but what we what we need to happen is for us to draw a land now and it has to be it immediately okay so we're gonna fall the 10 life draw and i don't think we're gonna we're not gonna be able to race now because if we were gonna fall the five next turn and we even if we draw a land we can't beat the chancellor we would have had to have drawn it there that's a bummer uh without the chancellor we would have had turn one brainstorm into burning wish lines i diamond echo but we just can't beat that and we're just supposed to resubmit no boarding for reanimator okay game two and we are on the play this seems reasonable keep so it depends on if our opponent reveals chancellor or not what we're going to do here they kept seven reveal chancellor okay so we're just going to play lion's eye diamond and pass paying for the chancellor attacks okay pass the turn lotus petal looting come on no whammies chancellor chancellor grief okay so they're probably going to discard our burning wish here burning wish down now they have four cards left in hand no land wow okay so we got caught a little bit of a break there uh wish claws decent let's see what i can find off brainstorm i want to hide the claw on top uh, is this a win if i put back ponder taiga go fetch a black source dark ritual float one this is an ad nauseum yeah that's ad nauseum. okay underground c dark ritual wish claw Mox Opal, which has Metalcraft thanks to this Wishclaw Talisman. Right of Flame. Add three black. Activate the Wishclaw. Go get Ad Nauseum. We've played our land. So we cannot uh, do that. But we're at 19 life. Let's see what we can do. 
Okay, Lotus Petal, tons of zeros. That's great. Burning Wish, and that's lethal. Okay, we can stop there. Blinds a diamond. Blinds a diamond. Petal. Petal. Opal. Let's chant them. Okay. From Mox. Imprint the Ponder. Cast Brainstorm. Put back two lands, why not? Rate of Flame. From Mox. Imprint the Veil of Summer. So Storm 16. Storm 17. Play Burning Wish. Add three block. And then grab Tendrils. Okay, so we won game number two, but we're on the draw game three against Reanimator. I'm not feeling very confident. I feel like we got a little bit lucky this game because our opponent overvalued Chancellor to how badly we lost to a game one. All right, so we just have to get lucky again in game three. There's not really a strategy to this matchup. It's like sort of just hope that Reanimator doesn't get to do its thing. You can have Veil of Summer and Chant to help out, but... For the most part, it's just an unfavored matchup. This hand's pretty good. Um, I don't hate this at all. My mulligan to six, we'll keep. We are 36% to draw an action spell every single turn. I'm sorry, 34% to draw an action spell every single turn. So, I think that this hand's pretty reasonable. We also have Chan that could possibly disrupt them if they don't do anything super meaningful on, on turn one. All right, they did not reveal Chancellor. Let's say Meyer. Go Grief. Wonder what they take here. It's either a Lion's Eye Diamond or Chant, I think. Personally, I think Lion's Eye Diamond is the better pick, but we'll see. Because taking the diamond shuts me off Metalcraft, and I can't draw a, like a Burning Wish or a Wish Claw to win the game. But they chose the chant. And they're passing. I wonder if that means that they have a chant in hand. Or a silence. Uh, Eric's list does have silence in it, so it's unfortunate, but that's where we're at. And Dark Ritual, not the draw here. Pass the turn. Let's see if they get uh, scrub land. All right, they got bad lands. Is this an entomb? Yep, we're in trouble. They got Sears emissary, so we can actually beat that card using empty the warrens. Um, it's not a hard lock. And they reanimate it. We just have to draw burning wish. Like, Burning Wish off the top right now beats Emissary. And they're going to lose 7 life, so they're going to 12. Come on, Wish. Please give me a Burning Wish. Alright, they named Sorcery. Which is expected. I just need to draw into an action spell now. Come on, Doc, please. I have to pass. So next turn is realistically our last draw step. We get to fight back. Because... Empty won't race after that. And I don't play Chain of Vapor. So this is our last draw step where we can hit. I guess, in theory, I could Orms chant them with the kicker to buy time. Alright, so here's an Unmask. I could try to chant walk them. Okay, Dark Ritual down. Come on, deck, please. Should I fetch it then? Probably not in case I draw Ponder or Brainstorm. There we go. All right. Um, is that a red? Bright of Flame? Lotus Petal? Mox Opal? Wish Claw Talisman? So my fear is giving them Wish Claw and passing. Because they have one card in hand. I could add Nauseam from 13 here. It seems kind of risky to me. I need to think about this. So I have one mana. Six mana plus two is nine. So 
but it's eight plus one is nine mana. So I could go Wish Claw for a Wish Claw. So that's minus three is six. Burning Wish empty, that's 14. But they would have two Wish Claws. But that would be like a blocker reanimating grief. Like if they like go land exhume grief, I, I would beat that race. So the question is, can I afford to give them double wish claw talisman? All right, so just to count again, one mana plus eight mana is nine. I think I'm forgetting the mana to activate this. I just realized that. So it, it, we would actually need 10 mana for that line. All right, so I'm not exactly sure what my game plan is here still. I feel like it's probably not ad nauseum just because there's still an echo in the deck. And maybe I should have fetched a white source there so that way I can maybe rip the one of chant that's still in the deck. So I can just go burning wish into empty for exactly 12 and hope that's good enough. Or I can be a crazy person and cast ad nauseum. This is a difficult decision. I still have a land drop, but if I flip Echo, I'm just screwed. I think I just have to do Burning Wish. And then Empty. Yeah, I'm regretting not fetching Scrubland with that Underground Sea. Also, if their card in hand is Dark Ritual, I'm dead. Because they could go Dark Ritual, activate Wish Claw. Uh, and then like exhume grief, and they'd have one blocker going to one. Yeah, me not getting the scrub line might actually cost me this game. I don't even know why I fetched. Like I was thinking that I had enough mana for that. Uh, wish claw, wish claw, burning wish, empty line, and I didn't. So I didn't need to fetch there, and I just put myself at risk. A little bit disappointed in myself right now. Yeah, this looks like looting. All right, it's looting. They're going to one card in hand. So I think that means that we win. Like, I don't think there's, I guess that's not true. So they can block once here, go to one the next turn. Okay, they're not dead. Silence Chancellor, they have no cards. Okay, so we attack and put them to one. So if they discarded a Grissel brand there, they had life. That's why I, I said that they weren't dead, but they didn't hit Grissel off the looting, and now I think we win. Because I don't think there's a one card out here, even with Wish Claw. Like, if they drew Dark Ritual, they could Wish Claw Chancellor, but, like, that's still not going to win. So I think we got it, even though I didn't play super well. And now they're using Wish Claw for maybe another looting. I don't know. But there's not anything they could get here. And they conceded. We got the match over Reanimator. Wow, we beat a Nightmare matchup. That's pretty awesome. And we advanced to 5-2. and two. two rounds left to go. Let's just keep on playing tight. No messing up fetching with our lands. Thankfully, it didn't cost me, but it could have. All right, next one coming right up. Round eight of nine, we're on the draw. I have faced this opponent once in my entire history of playing Magic Online, and they were on four color loam. Their last goldfish result was elves in 2018, so I would guess that our opponent isn't playing a blue deck, but I don't really know. That said, this hand doesn't do anything, so we need to mulligan it. And this is better. Uh, I'll keep this and bottom burn. Uh, actually, let's get rid of the second claw. That seems like a reasonable decision to make here. Okay, what are you playing, opponent? Delta. All right, so it is a blue deck. They're our first blue-red opponent of the event. Lotus Petal, okay. We're just going to pass here. I was thinking there was a chance we would make it throughout the entire thing without facing a single Ragavan. Um... This deck likely has Ragavan in it. Okay, so they're Jeskai. 
Okay, I'm not gonna auto yield to these. I've been burned by that in a few videos recently where I want to respond uh, to like something on there. So I'm not gonna auto yield. Interesting that they milled a wasteland against me. They must really be trying to just push the delirium aspect on these channelers. Did not shuffle. Okay. We'll take one. I might turn. I think I'm gonna play Burning Wish or Echo. I could play out the Claw, but when they're a white deck, I don't want to get hit by Prismatic Ending. And that was actually pretty good. Um, I could try to create a fight here, and then relay. Hmm. So I would get bit by Force Days if I do this. But I feel like it's worth it. Dark Ritual. Now let's cast Burning Wish. Taiga. Come on, try to force me. It is auto resolved. Am I supposed to? I could empty here for ten. I don't know if ten races double channeler. It's either that or relay for five. This is a really tough decision. I think I'm going to empty and pray. All right, empty on the stack. OK, all of them resolved. That's interesting. So these channelers are definitely going to be delirious this turn. And we are looking at a two turn clock with our goblins, at least right now. and. Unless they bolt us, their clock is over three turns. Iteration, okay. So that's another sorcery going to the graveyard. They might not get Delirium this turn. Okay, so there's Bobble. So that's Artifact, Land, Sorcery. So now they need uh, to play an instant. And they'll have Delirium. Prismatic Ending. Do you have another white source in your hand? You do. So that's going to bring them to 18. They can ending a goblin token. Okay, now they're looking for an instant to mill with the surveil. Land. They're thinking a long time about this surveil. I don't even know what I'm rooting for here, if I want them to get delirious or not. So if they become delirious, they have to attack with both. So then we crack for nine, crack for nine. But if they have another removal spell next turn, so now they do have delirium. So now they just need a removal spell next turn and then they win the race. They have four cards in hand. I knew this was risky. Okay. Back for nine. Or even a, they need removal or blocker in four cards. Like it's very reasonable. I wish claw, pass. Can't believe that resolved. Okay. My best draw is Lion's Eye Diamond. Blue. Brainstorm. We would just need their hand to just be nothing but counters in order to win this. So we need them to not have a blocker or a removal spell in any of these cards. So removal and cantrips. Or I'm sorry, counters and cantrips. That's what we need their entire hand to be. So prismatic endings, ponders, brainstorms, forces, dazes. It's a tall ask. This empty line certainly risky. Really, really want to draw lines at diamond. Wasteland. So that's actually going to cut off my LED tendrils uh, out here. Okay. So now we go to five. Just pass the turn. Come on. Just pass. I don't like this. Here's a dragon and we're dead. Ah, uh, we lost this game by a single life. I don't have an out here. Yep. Like I could draw LED and then, yeah, and they hit the brainstorm, which could have been an out. Yeah, that's a bummer. Maybe I should have veiled there. Uh, because to see if they'd force and then die. Fail of Summer? Yeah, I, I should have done that main phase. Just to see if they'd force it. 
That's just dumb. Alright, now we're dead. I mean, they probably weren't going to force the veil anyway, but I should have played to that out. Alright, so now we board in relays. And I'm going to check the more recent um, blue red list to see if there's null rods in them. I've been noticing a lot of meltdowns recently, but not null rods. So I don't want to have to board decay in. I guess they're just guy. Hmm. We didn't see sagas. Just guy ragavan. Swords. Bobble. So this looks like what we've been facing canonist. Um. So it's probably the. All right. So they have a canonist. It's essentially the same as having. Um. Here's another canonist and null rod. Okay, we should board in the decays. Okay, decay, board out the ponders. Board out ad nauseum. Let's try it. Game is a little bit of a heartbreaker. I just, I don't know why I didn't trust Relay for five to win that game. All I would have known is I would have revealed Veil of Summer, which was an extra card I didn't need, and Brainstorm. I didn't get to see the next three. Perhaps I should have drawn them. Game two, and we are on the play. Reasonable. Let's keep this. Just need an action spell. Okay, Delta Go. Bobble. They're targeting themselves. Included Delta. Volcanic and Pass. Okay. So they're going to draw a Bobble here. We draw. Dark Ritual isn't quite what we needed. So we will pass. Volcanic Island. Dragon Rage Channeler. So they held up a mana on turn one. So I wonder if they have like a Fluster or like a Pyroblast or something they're trying to uh, make us respect here. And here we do another Delta. We need to find an action spell. Expressive. Yep. Delta. Okay. We're going to take 1 to 19. They're fetching. They're 1 away from Delirium, so they might be like trying to bolt me here to get Delirium. Nope, they picked up a White Source. Brainstorm. Okay. So land, sorcery, artifact, instant. That will do. And they're milling a wasteland. Okay, so we're going to take three here and go to 17 life. When it still has seven cards in hand. All right, is this an action spell? Nope, another land. Okay, so we're flooding out pretty hard here. I do think that this hand is a keep, or our initial seven was a keep. But uh, right now we're drawing pretty low. Another channeler. That's a, a fast clock. We only have a few turns to draw now. Iteration. And if our action spell is a relay, we need additional time. Milling the meltdown. Okay. And iteration. I feel like by now they're so likely to have found double force. So our best draw is probably relay. But relay is going to take an extra turn, so it, we would want to draw relay like right now. Okay, they're passing. Draw. That's an action spell. I I just think that they have double four, so like, why would I jam here? The problem is every turn I wait, they get so many more looks with channeler. The next turn they swing for six. I go to eight. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get a little bit sneaky and just try to play Burning Wish and then like grab a relay out of the board. What is this? Do you have like Pyroblast or Hydroblast? I mean, looks like it. Come on, just resolve. Okay, so it resolved. That's a good sign. So I'm going to get relay here. Go to 11. 
play Dark Ritual. They might try to force Ritual. And if they do, that's an extra storm count because then we play this Delta from hand, play Diamond and Relay. They let it go, okay. I think we just have to try to cash in as much as we can. Uh, this doesn't actually have a red source I can get. These are both red sources. So I might have messed up there a little bit because now I have to sack the pedal in order to relay. I could fetch here twice going to nine before I relay, but then I'm dead to bolt and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to relay for six. LED. LED. We need some protection. Wish Claw is a good one. Tendrils, I like that. Relay. Okay, so we just need to live. We're at 11. Please, I hope my opponent boarded out all their bolts. Okay, so they're attacking for 6 and I'm going to 5 life. They have 8 cards in hand. Wasteland, okay. A little bit nervous here. Another surveil. Milled surgical, okay. I don't see surgical in any of the recent lists, so this must be their own list. And looking at the recent list on Goldfish, I actually don't see Lightning Bolt in these decks. Not to say that it can't play Bolt, but I'm just seeing Swords and Endings. Another Ponder. Okay. Yeah, these are all just swords and ending decks. I kept one card on top with Ponder here. Did not shuffle. Is this a dragon? Looks like a dragon. That's a Merc Tide. I'm going after my green source. Okay. In our upkeep, I'm going to fetch for Trop and Scrubland. We want to get Trop with this, Scrubland with the Delta. Okay, they're at 17. We want to start on the mana here, I think. Actually, I'm going to start on Wishclaw from a hand before uh, I play any of this other stuff. It's from three. Play Wishclaw. Okay, and now I will Veil of Summer. If they force here, our Tendrils is likely just lethal. Okay. So now they need to resolve all these surveils. It's worth noting, and I mean, it's not likely going to be something that happens, but our opponent's down to almost nine minutes on clock here. We're towards the end of this game, but assuming that I win this one, they're going to have to play faster game three. They're not going to be able to take their time with all this stuff. They've been playing sort of at a slow pace. They kept one card on top, so they're probably going to keep all of these on top if that's going to be the case. And then they chose to put it to the graveyard, and that is the first Ragavan sighting of this tournament. Okay, and another Ragavan. Force and negation. Okay, so now what we do is we sacrifice these diamonds for mana. Wishclaw Talisman, arm number eight. Now let's sacrifice this for white. Go get Orm's Chant. Like, the only way we could possibly lose this game right now is Mind Break Trap, so let's just not lose to it. And chant them. Tendrils. All right, we have uh, gotten pretty lucky here and pulled the win out of our butt. We are so lucky that that Burning Wish resolved, and now we get to go to a game three. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I'm just going to resubmit. Game three, and we've opened up on a pretty good relay hand. We're going to try this one out. I'd love to hit another artifact to turn on the opal. Keep. Our opponent took a mulligan. All right, so they kept six, and now here we go. Misty 
into what? Volcanic. The first Ragavan of the tournament in round number eight. Not a big fan of that uh, that opening for us, but I'll live. And here we could try to jam the turn one relay, but I'm going to be a little more conservative and wait until turn two. I don't want to risk uh, getting blown out here, so I'd rather just wait a second. All right, Ragavan hits Decay, which does nothing. It's also a card. I don't know if I wanted to draw or not. They're passing. Okay. Draw. So the Delta casts Dark Ritual. I imagine that this is going to resolve, but we'll see if they bite. Dark Ritual. I'm going to try to get them to Force Veil of Summer. All right, Chromox. No imprint. Let's cast Veil. Vale. Uh, I would oh, just resolve. That's a bummer. I really wanted them to force that. All right, so this is going to be a relay for seven. Whoops, can't cast that off of green. Undo. Red. Relay. Storm seven. So Wheel of Fortune, one sided. Decay is exiled. That was a pretty good relay. Let's go. All right, they're fetching with Tarn. They're at 18, which is an, uh, an even life total for our Tendrils, which is somewhat relevant. And they exile the Verdant. That's pretty good for us. Five cards in hand. Red mana. Two mana. Is this a duration? Meltdown. That's a bummer. We could still win on our turn. It's just going to be more difficult now without all that initial starting mana. Ding dong! Hell yeah! That was an amazing rip. Okay, I'm going to sacrifice this for red and for black. Let's cast Brainstorm. And the reason I want to cast Brainstorm here is not only for Storm Count, but if we hit I was going to say an imprintable, we could uh, play that off of, imprint it onto the mox. Uh, instead, I think I'm going to take the Wish Claw here for added storm. Play the Rite of Flame. And Wish Claw. Activate Claw. So if we get another diamond, that's from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plenty of storm. All right, I like that. Let's get the diamond. Play diamond. Got some black mana. Veil of Summer. That resolve, that's good. Burning Wish. Yes. Um, I think we just get like Echo in case something goes wrong. Mox. Okay. No imprint and tendrils for 10 copies. But even if they had swords on their own Ragavan here, it's not enough. And they conceded. We are now six and two. One round left to go. Let's get it. Maybe we stand a chance at top 16. All right. See you in the final round. The final round. I was 30th place coming into this round, so top 16 might be a dream at this point, even with a win. That said, there's going to be X2s that make top 8, and I'm probably not even going to top 16. This event was so large. So kind of just hoping for a really big tiebreaker jump here, assuming that I win. Uh, this hand is so close, I want to keep it, but I think I'm supposed to mulligan it. Damn, this hand is really good. Like, if this was a land, this is a snap keep. But I have to mulligan. And I think we keep this. Just bottom the pedal. Keep. I have no clue what our opponent's playing, by the way. Absolutely no clue. All right. They're going to five. The reason I kept uh, the extra land over pedal is 
I want to play a long game where I'm trying to peer into the abyss. That's the idea here. So if I want to play a longer game where I cast peer, actual mana sources are better than a temporary mana source like Petal. But we need to see what our opponent's up to. Planes. 60 card D&T. Okay. Draw. All right, so I think here I'm going to upkeep chant them. Trying to buy time. We really need to win game number one, by the way. Because post board, this matchup is very difficult. So winning game one would be just a huge lift. We need to draw like a lion's eye diamond for turn. Okay. Baseline, that's kind of brutal. All right, a Lion's Eye Diamond would still give us Echo. They took away the Taiga. I can't cast Burning Wish now. So that actually took us off Echo. I would have thought that they'd hit the Scrubland. Okay. Claw's good. Uh, but not good enough to cast uh, Echo Vans this turn. We're going to play out the Opal, too. The nice thing about having the Wish Claw is that we can now use the Burning Wish for Massacre if need be, but we would need to find a red source or draw another artifact to be able to cast the Burning Wish. Kind of hoping that they just missed their land drop here and pass. Okay. Draw. Um, this is an interesting spot. So I can just go get Massacre, and then one more mana source gives me Ad nauseum. Ooh, another option. All right, so here's a thought. I can Wish Claw this turn. So the plan, I Burning Wish, go get Massacre, activate Wish Claw, go get Ad nauseum right now. So that way on their turn, if they activate Claw to give it back, I can, I can just activate Wish Claw to go get Dark Ritual. And that's assuming that they activate to go get Waste. I don't know if I mentioned that out loud. Uh, or... If they just pass, I have Dark Ritual Adnaz. Okay, so let's go get Massacre. We have three swamps and they have a plains. Now we go get Ad Nauseum. Okay. Pass the turn. All right, so it looks like they're going to, no attacks. All right, we're, so we're still at 18. Let's put Ad Nauseum on the stack. We do have a land drop. Opal, Chrome Mox. Lines of Diamonds, an amazing reveal there. We're going to keep on revealing because we can, but we could stop. I just don't want to lose to something silly. Veil of Summer, Red of Flame. Let's stop there. Okay, play Petal. Petal. Our opponent doesn't believe in using the F6 key. That's okay. Um, let's cast Rite of Flame. Rite of Flame. Max Opal. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. And let's cast Brainstorm. Don't need these veils. Those can go on top. And let's play Chromox and print Brainstorm. Ponder. We can keep another diamond, why not? Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Wish Claw. And now Burning Wish. Yes, and then go grab tendrils. So some of you might be thinking, Brian, why don't you just like not showboat and just cast your uh, your lethal storm spell? I am a big believer in that you should take every precaution to play around even the craziest stuff your opponent could have. Like, for example, I'm not trying to jinx this into reality, but what if our opponent was just sitting on an orange chant for some reason? Like, it's not likely, it's not impossible, but 
why not play out all my artifacts and put myself in a spot to win in case something bizarre happens? Like, it's pretty free to do so. So that's why I like just playing out all my spells one step at a time and get ahead. And we're going to board the same as we did before, where we're taking out Veil of Summers and one Ponder for five removal spells. We won the most important game, which is pretty huge. That was turn four. Game two on the draw. Hopefully our last game of this uh, event, in my opinion. I would like to get this one. And here we have a way of beating my brick trap. We have an answer to Deafening Silence or Thalia. We also have Burning Wish for Massacre or it's our action spell. This hand is solid. I'm going to keep this. Okay, and our opponent is also kept seven. Planes. And a mom. Okay. Draw. And this might be what you think is like a little bit aggressive. I'm going to imprint the Rite of Flame here. Because if our opponent plays Thalia, I want the ability to Burning Wish for Massacre because the Mother Rooms is shutting off the Decay here. So I don't want to get locked underneath Thalia and not be able to Burning Wish for the Massacre. Planes. And that's Thalia. Yep. All right, so I'd honestly like to draw another uh, Black Source if I'm being honest. So this gets Scrubland. But if I can draw another black source, I don't get destroyed by Wasteland. And that was not a black source. Okay, so I'm just going to go get Scrub here and cast Burning Wish. Okay. Play Wish, go get Massacre. Okay, so Massacre is now in our hand. We don't have an action spell anymore, but we're going to make do. So the thing we're looking to avoid right now is a Wasteland on Scrubland because that is our Swamp. We need a Swamp in order to cast Massacre for free. And if our opponent decides to swing with both creatures here, we could actually Abrupt Decay the Thalia and hold on to the Massacre. But it looks like our opponent wisely decided to hold back the Mother of Runes. Okay. We're at 17. Do you have land number three? No. Okay. That was a huge draw. Uh, I'm going to cast the Massacre here. I just don't want to risk them drawing into Wasteland. And this Orm's Chant means that if we draw a Wish Claw or a Burning Wish, we actually just have protection from Mind Break as well. And I'm playing this Petal out to avoid another Thalia, because if they play Thalia, I can Abrupt Decay it on their own step, and then untap and draw it into my action spell. There's only the one Massacre, friend. <laughs> uh, if only this were the old days where you could uh, Burning Wish for a card that was exiled, because then I could Burning Wish again for the Massacre, which would be very funny. Okay. And I'm just going to pass the turn here. So we have Abrupt Decay. We just need to draw a Burning Wish or a Wish Claw Talisman. Spirit of the Labyrinth. Uh, so that's going to shut off Echo and some other stuff. I'm not sure if I should decay it or not. I think I'm going to leave that for now. Draw. And I'm just going to pass. Because I can theoretically beat a spirit where if they just are sitting on another Thalia, that's a real problem for me. Okay, and now we fall to 14 life. Do you have anything post-combat? Caracas? And Athalia. Pretty good. Ugh, kind of a pain. So Burning Wish can only empty now, and then Ad Nauseam can, or we can, Wish Claw can still get Ad Nauseam. But we'd, we'd have to draw it, and right now we're not drawing action spells. All right, so they're gonna attack us for five here, and that will put us to nine. Okay. Mother of Runes. That's a problem. That means that I have to uh, attempt to decay the Thalia now, or else the Mother of Runes is going to create a problem later. All right, Abrupt Decay Thalia. They're going to bounce it with Crocus. 
And we need to draw Burning Wish or Wish Claw here. I'd also take Ad Nauseam even from nine. Yep. Okay. And the draw step. There we go. All right. So let's start off on the chant to make sure that we don't get mind breaked. This is our game to lose now. We have six storm. We need to get up to nine. So we could empty, but we're also giving them a wish claw. And Mother Runes can then make Spirit Pro Red, but that's still three clock, uh, three turn clock. So I'm sort of interested in empty, but I don't know how much. And it doesn't really matter my sequencing here because they've been chanted. Okay, Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. And let's play the claw. So the question is, what do we do from here? Um, Burning Wish Tendrils is eight. We need nine. So we have four floating. This is the same problem we had in the other match, actually where I needed to Wish Claw Burning Wish Tendrils, and I ended up being one short. This is the same exact situation right here. So four mana, five mana, six mana, nine mana. That's not good enough. So am I supposed to add Nauseam from nine life? I could Burning Wish Empty, and that actually races um, the Spirit, but if they untap and play Flicker Wisp, I lose that race. Such a tough call here. All right, so sacrificing the diamond for red is like a pretty free play for me to make here. Let's activate the claw. We can do that. So we have eight mana. You know what? I'm just going to cast Ad Nauseam. My friend's not going to let me down. Come on, Ad Nause. Term seven. Mox Opal, okay, I like that. Brainstorm, not good. Brainstorm, not good. Opal. LED, come on, give me a tutor. Dark Ritual. There we go! There we go! Thank you, Doc. Wow. Ad nauseum never lets me down. Nine life, got there. All right, and now we can just cast this Lethal Tendrils of Agony. Like I said, they've been Orms Chanted. They can't do anything. And this is going to mean that we went 7-2 and two out of 9 rounds. Not in top 8 contention, unfortunately. And I'll show you the standings after this. But there's nothing to be ashamed about with a 7-2. That's a pretty good record in an Eternal Weekend. Our opponents said good games. That was nice of them. And uh, now we're just clicking our tendrils and hitting F6. We played this game pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, we were patient with the Abrupt Decay. I, I played the spells when I needed to. The up, well, We had Chant for Mind Break, but wow. That was a really good match. And you'll see here that I'm in 30th place. So Anurag is who I'm rooting for in first place. I hope Anurag brings home a painting. Uh, but there's going to be a few X1s that make it because... Like you'll see down here in 10th place, these two are still playing for top eight. So there's 11 people playing for eight slots. So there's going to be like one or two X2s that make top eight. We're not even like, I'll be realistic here. I don't even think I'm in a top 16. I would, I really hope that I do, but I don't expect it. Um, and it looks like our oops opponent won this round as well. So we both went seven, two. Uh, our only two losses this entire event were to oops all spells and blue white Omni tell with Orm's chant. Those are just nightmare matchups. We also beat Eight Cast, which is a bad matchup. The Forcible Chalice deck. We beat Blackheart Reanimator. We had a tough journey here, and uh, we managed to pull out a positive record. So I'm pretty happy with this event. Let's hope for a little bit better tomorrow, but can't be fr frustrated with this. Thank you for watching. This has been a long video. I do appreciate your support. Have a good day. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. 
And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.